Shoot, that's a workout. You sure it'll inside out? Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. What's going on, everybody? And today we're back to talk about the last five episodes of Amazon's Batman Cape Crusader. Todd, we uh, we covered one through five last week. Yes, we I did. I think the, uh, the reaction to that video and our Cape Crusader uh, takes have been divisive. Very to divisive. To say the least. Say At the least, least mine is. I think you were a lot more... I think you liked it better than I did. Other than I obviously can't dress myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, I think for, for, like I said, for you, you were, you were, you liked it more than I did. I was very critical of it. I stand by that for sure. I, I think, uh, you know, everybody likes what they like, and I, did, I don't care for the first five. Gotcha. And you liked the first five better than me. We watched the last five. Season one is officially in the books. Uh, has your opinion changed? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? What do you think, just general thoughts for this uh, last half? Honestly, I think uh, 6 through 10, for me personally, was a little bit more solid than 1 through 5. I do I do rate it a little bit higher. Uh, it's still got some issues. It still has a few problems. But I, I, overall, I think it was a, a stronger back half than it was a first half for me personally. Yeah, I can't, I can't deny that. I do. I think the ratings for me will come out to be a little bit stronger than what you got in the first half of the season. I'm not. It's not going to be dramatic for my end. Yours may be dramatic. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Mine is not going to be a dramatic difference. But I do All think right. the last five were more solid than the first five at least so let's kind of jump into them a little bit and talk about just a little bit of things that's going on in each episode so okay. what's going on in episode six todd so uh, episode six i'll go ahead and throw that out there i think is my favorite of the series so far really really <laughs> this one i didn't really care for that much <laughs> i don't know i love this gentleman I, ghost episode i go back and forth on this being my uh my weakest rated of the back really? half yeah so what what was it yeah so you mentioned it's a gentleman ghost episode so like what do you what makes it like maybe your favorite I don't know. I kind of feel like going off of kind of what I said the last time, you know, I wanted it more, more moody, more atmospheric. I get that right here. Yeah, no, that, that is true. <laughs> I do have a note that it's, you get a lot of atmosphere, especially in that like ending kind of graveyard fight for yeah, sure. And I kind of mentioned that too, you know, I want more, uh, you know, gangsters with guns, Tommy guns, you know, more stuff versus the mob. We, get, we actually get a little bit more of that here in these last five. So. Right. It was just it was just a nice episode. I can see this making its way onto somebody's like Halloween episode playlist. <laughs> right. Uh, but basically, you know, the gentleman ghost is is in Gotham. He's making some appearances around town and you know, creating some havoc. Uh Batman's not a believer. <laughs> no, it... Doesn't really believe in ghosts. Uh we found out that uh Lucius Fox is kinda wanting to buy this old property that Bruce had some interest in, but you know, Lucius is gonna buy it, kinda develop it for his well, own. So you get that money for Yeah, him. You, well, you know. I get you bilking, you overcharging Bruce Wayne on his <laughs> uh, on his uh, legal expenses. I, Bruce has got him retainer, I guess. I guess yeah, a little so. bit I don't know. I but guess so. Turns out that property is key to kind of eliminating the gentleman ghost. He's got a tie to that property. You know, if you if you burn that deed with some kind of pure blood, which we find out Alfred is like a pure blood. Right. And I, it's just it was just a a weird horrorish kind of Halloweenish kind of episode, and it just it just checked some boxes for me. Also, an appearance <laughs> by uh, Papa Midnight as Papa well, Midnight, another yeah. kind of uh, link to the kind of more cult, more uh, uh, you know mysterious uh, ethereal side of the uh, the right. DC universe a little bit. So he shows up as well. Gentleman Ghost is it was it is it Jim Braddock, James Braddock, James Brown. <laughs> Not James Brown. <laughs> it was either Braddock or Craddock. 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 Yeah, Craddock. I think it was Craddock. Jim Craddock. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. I think that was it. Jim yeah. from The Office. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, and you get some other subplots here. You get um, uh, with uh, Harvey Dent, he's kind of, uh, he's starting to fall behind in the polls. Right. He's not doing so good politically. You start to get the idea and the the inference that he's going to start to align himself with Rupert Thorne, kind of setting some things in motion for what you'll see in the latter half of these episodes and kind of focus on, especially in like 9 and 10, mm -hmm. of what happens there. Yeah, like I don't hate it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm like, oh, this is fucking terrible. Like, no, I, just, <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't. 
I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was. Um, I do like that they didn't cheap out or not cheap out, but like puss out and be like, "Oh, he's not a ghost." And like the Scooby Doo thing, like let's pull this mask yeah, off. It wasn't old man Peabody. Yeah, exactly. It was exactly. actually it was actually it a was ghost. actually a ghost. Yeah. I will give it. I will give it a little bit of credit for that. I think it was probably of them uh, more my least favorite but again you know um I, I do think like you said it has it does have some atmosphere and it does it is a little bit more moody and atmospheric than some of them which i had been asking for but i just didn't that's my problem with a lot of these none of them like really like kind of put you over the moon over the top like, yeah like none of I them are you. very memorable and i'm like none of them like really i'm like oh this is a very good Batman episode. I'm just like, okay, right. <laughs> it feels like a show to me where you just kind of put on in the background. That's honestly how I feel about it, and that's mostly what I did. You kind of listen to this while you're scrolling through Facebook that's or basic, TikTok, basically. And... <laughs> yeah, like I feel like it's one of those shows, and like I don't know. I mean, obviously people disagree. Our our video last time, uh, it's definitely uh, we're in the ratio. It's about fifty fifty split of people that liked it, people that didn't. So, and I think the show is kind of becoming that too, kind of online from just kind of the audience yeah. feedback and stuff. So, like. And again, enjoy what you enjoy. Oh, definitely. I'm going to tell you like it is, folks. I I still really don't like it. It's not my favorite thing. It hasn't changed its rankings above any of the other Batman shows that we did last week. Has your ranking changed? Is it now better than any of the other Batman shows? I don't think I would put it any higher than any of those shows that we mentioned last week. I just think I... I like, I'll just be honest, I like the last five better than the first five. Right. And that kind of bumped me up a little bit. All right, fair I'll, enough. Yeah. Uh, moving on to episode seven, this was my favorite episode. Okay. Of the back half. This was my favorite because, like, and not really because of Onomatopoeia. Like, I felt like that's whatever. And, like, I get, like, that's his whole thing, but some of, like, the delivery with the, like, boom, 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 and, like, yeah. that kind of stuff, like, that was a little, like, grating and a little cringe. Like, I get that's the whole deal, but, like, I like the fact of, like, that somebody's put out a, a hit on Gordon. He's, they put out a hit on, you think Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon, Gordon yeah, yeah. you think a, a hit on Gordon at first, and, like, I like that it's it's more of a, Except for the onomatopoeia stuff, which I mean, still technically, it's more of like a street levelish type of deal. Mm-hmm. I like that they, you know, they get chased by the uh, the the onomatopoeia guys who like he has like twelve look alike guys, like they're just yeah. all in sync, like they're military precision. They all look alike. They have the all, all the same jawline. Right, right. Uh, but like you know, they chase them. They uh, in, in, in like a stolen cop car, they end up at the Wayne Gardens. And like it's like kind of this like you know uh, development house development yeah. with one finished uh, show house a show house yeah and I like that little like kind of standoff where they're just like it's just them it's just it's Jim Gordon Barbara Gordon Montoya and what's the dude's name Corgan Corgan yes Corgan all just kind of having this little standoff versus on a as me and outside. Batman's, of course, around. He's taking them out. But I just thought it was like kind of like it felt street level. It felt different. It was something different than I'd seen in a yeah. in a Batman show before. Uh, I, I have it as a note later, but I will just kind of set it up too again. Barbara, she's just running around with a gun a lot this season. Yeah, she's got a lot of she gets a lot of gunplay. A lot of a lot of, a lot of gunplay. Yeah, in this a lot of gunplay. Just some things I wrote down. Uh, you know, from Ottawa P. Obviously, the whole bum bum bum. There was one where he was just like ding 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 ding, and I'm like, this guy's kind of great on me a little bit. Yeah, I don't claim to know a whole lot about the villain Anamanapia, no. other than he speaks Anamanapias. I guess. Yeah, I mean, just for me, I, I, this was another strong episode. Like, you, if you want to go ahead and finish, no, go ahead. no I, I, I agree with you. this. Is another. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, go ahead. Apparently, controversy <laughs> carries on inside. inside the walls. This is a little here. inside baseball for you, folks. But, uh, we hate now, each other. I, another strong episode. I liked it. It's just I, I kind of felt like, you know, Onomatopoeia kind of felt maybe a little bit out of place. That's the worst as part the heavy. of it. If it was just like... Um, maybe a Floyd Lawton had been over this gang or something. You kind And of he little... was in there. He was the one that first yeah. attempted that mm-hmm. assassination on Gordon. I was thinking, too, now that you just mentioned that, like that guy with that like lazy eye that we see a little bit later on that tosses the, the acid on Dean. Mm-hmm. Could have just been him. Yeah. Could have just been him or something. I guess it would probably take him out of play for that. But, yeah, I, Automatopoeia is the weakest part of the episode. Of the episode, yeah. I could have done without him, and it could have been some random Rupert Thorne heavy, and yeah. I think it would have rated 
I would probably give it even a, a more point right. better. You get the Batman and Autumn on a Pia fight. Did you catch where he's like, biff, biff. bam, pow. Yeah. And I'm like, no. Now I think Batman actually says like, pow or something. You something. catch it, Batsy says something like something that. Something like yeah. that, yeah. When he cracks him in the throat or yeah. whatever, yeah. Uh, and at the end of the episode, I thought it was a good kind of twist that it was not Commissioner Gordon that was yeah. the target of the assassination attempt. It was actually Barbara. And then we get another crooked cop in Gotham, Corrigan. Corrigan. He turns on her. He's going to murder her. And then he gets saved at the last minute by, was it Commissioner Gordon who comes in, right? Because Batman's right. like, you are the target. And then he comes right at the end. Yeah. I thought again. I thought this was my favorite episode just because it felt different. I like the setting of it. I like the little shootout in the house. I mm-hmm. like the fight with Barbara and Corrigan had with some of the goons in the kitchen. I thought it was like it was a nice change of pace to what I'd seen before in the show. It's definitely going to rate the highest, I would think, of the episodes here. Uh, what about episode eight? What's going on there? What do you think about episode eight? So episode eight, we basically have a bunch of uh, young potential Robins. Yeah, this is just like <laughs> this is just like cameo Easter egg city. This may be like your fan service ultimate episode, right? right here. We got right. a bunch of young, uh, look like they're seven, eight, nine years old kids right. sneaking into the carnival. We got a uh, young Dicky, obviously Dick Grayson. Yeah, I've got. I think it was Jason. They call him Jace. Mm. Uh, later they mentioned Steffi Brown, and uh, where's little Carrie? Carrie Kelly with her little slingshot. Got a slingshot yeah. and her glasses. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I clocked to, um, so like the whole premise is there's there's a brother and sister duo, Anton and Natalia, right? Mm-hmm. And they're kind of, they're in the uh, in the little circus freaks. You know, we see other circus freaks like Bearded Lady. I clocked that as Killer Croc, right? I'm pretty sure that was Killer Croc. Right, that yeah. beats up Batman or Bruce Wayne for being a suspected pedo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just like, Ooh. what are you, you back here looking for little gales? Back here looking for little gales, <laughs> are you? <laughs> Bam, pow. And then they just leave a pedo in a ditch. Um, yeah, I clocked him as Killer Croc, but uh, basically they they have this kind of like setup where the the griff is like I can I have I'm a scientist Anton is a scientist and I can uh, my powers mystical powers my scientific powers can turn this little average little girl that's planted in the audience into like a strong man and she can lift this strong man dumbbell right right and they kind of that's their griff that's their show that's their part of that's how they make their living I guess in the background though Natalia really is some type of I'm not, I don't is this a character from the comics then I'm, I'm not really familiar with this character I will say that I want to say yes but I'm not quite sure who so I don't want to like really fuck this up. She's so got I, like I think they were potentially back in the day. She's got like soul sucking powers of some yes. sort. Um and she is going around kind of feasting on kids. We see like little Dickie and his brother at the beginning. She ends up taking Dickie back to like their little like uh trailer thing, their little like wagon yeah. <laughs> that they've got at the right. back of the back of the uh uh, the show, and she ends up like kind of like you know sucking some juice out of him. That sounds wrong because he's a little, <laughs> he's a little kid. Woo. But uh, you know what I mean, Todd. Right. Uh, yeah, she she does her thing on him, stealing his essence. Yeah, exactly. It still sounds wrong. Yes, uh, it does. Uh, Anton is like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? No more, no more sucking off these little kids in the back in this wagon, okay? <laughs> and she's like, okay. And then she starts sucking off some more kids in the wagon, <laughs> and he gets pissed off. And I did like the scene where like she finally kind of loses it on him and just like cracks him. Over that like desk or chest of drawers or whatever like it is, falls over on him. Yeah, and he's like, I can't feel my legs. Um, but yeah, like I thought, I thought this was a pretty, pretty good, pretty decent episode. Like I liked it. It had that like where we talked about before, where I didn't kind of feel like. I got what I wanted so much out of the Gentleman Ghost episode. I thought this was a good, like, yeah, um, kind of like more supernatural kind of episode. Yeah, and I thought it also kind of like aped a little bit to like. You remember that scene in like Justice League Unlimited where um was it Batman saves is it Solitaire? Is that her name? You know, where she's like it it might be it might, it's like a later episode. I think it's the one that like ties back into Is that the like, little girl on the swing where he yes. kinda comforts her? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, she's yeah. like dying because she got something wrong with her brain mm-hmm. and like he's like comforting. It kinda like a little bit of it had that little bit of feeling because he's yeah. like he's not necessarily just trying to be like, I'm gonna beat you up and throw you in prison. He's like trying to help her because she's got some kind of like she can't be in the sun disease too or whatever with her powers. Yeah. So like I thought all of that culminated in a pretty good pretty good episode yeah it was for me another solid one yeah i enjoyed it yeah like i didn't like i I thought this one kind of delivered more of that supernatural it was kind of weird uh i was hoping like it would get real dark and she would like really have killed those kids like that was (laughs) me though like i thought it was going to get real dark and i'm like oh if we get into child killing you got (laughs) extra point here um but yeah just like a lot of good 
like little Easter egg cameos, a lot of because at first I was like, I saw that the the Dicky, and I'm like, that looks exactly how they drew the Golden little, Age Robin. <laughs> li, well, little Dick Grayson yeah. in the animated series, like yeah. it's exactly the same. And then I didn't really put the Jace together at first, and then they're like when, when I heard Stephanie Brown, I'm like, okay, well, this is what we're doing. And then it's like, oh, that's little Carrie Kelly. Okay, yeah. I got you. I see what you're doing, Bruce Tim. And, I mean, I don't know if they're going to do anything with this, but there's all these age-appropriate for back in that time. Robin's running around it. <laughs> pick of the litter, Batman. Pick of the litter, yeah. yeah. Just pick one out. Because, you know, we've never really seen, you know, I mean, we have an animation, really not in animation much. We've seen, like, a that young of a Robin, you know. I think in the animated series, Robin was more of a teenager. Yeah, Tim Drake in the new Batman Adventures was kind of. He was of, a little young, He was, yeah. like, preteen, though. These yeah. are, like, eight. Six, are, six, seven, eight, yeah, yeah something like so that. So if they decide to go that route, this could be the youngest kind of, you know, animated version of Robin we've ever seen. I just love, like, a little final, like, little, like, post credit scene or something where, like, Batman's a mask, like all the kids that he saved, and be like, they won't miss this one. And it just, like, <laughs> takes him under the arm and just, right. like, you know, starts walking away. Uh, but, yeah, like, again, uh, another subplot, too, we're setting up a lot of dense stuff. He's starting to, like... Rupert Thorne's wanting him to basically let some dude go. He's starting to kind of grow a pair. Like, you know, I don't need your money. Even though I'm taking your money, I don't need your money. I don't need your money. I'm not going to let this dude go. And that ultimately kind of sets up the uh, the last little part of this episode where uh, Dent, uh, Harvey Dent finally gets turned into Two-Face. He gets some acid thrown onto him at, in the bathroom. He's just trying to take a piss in peace. <laughs> and he's like, hey, Dent. Yeah. Right in the face. So, uh, you get know, like another, another little setup for what – Really is going to be a very Harvey Dent heavy uh, finale in nine and ten, I yep. would say. So, uh, you want to take us through episode nine? What I call my dinner with Harvey, Todd. <laughs> my dinner with Harvey. Yeah. So basically, uh, Harvey's having he's having some issues uh, uh, post acid throw. Uh, he's kind of secluded himself into his apartment. He's not, you know, going out. He's not talking to anybody. Uh, Bruce Wayne kind of comes by. He's like, "Hey, Harv, come on, let's go out. I've, you know, booked us a table. You need to get out of here. Get back into society. Get back into life." And uh, Harvey, yep, up top, he ain't quite just Harvey anymore. He's, <laughs> right. Like, he's kind of getting that dual personality starting to, to grow and starting to come out. And he's kind of figuring out, you know, Rupert Thorne's bunch was behind this, obviously. So he starts looking for those guys. Tony Zito taking him out and getting him closer and closer to Thorne. Uh, you know, pretty pretty decent episode, I would say. I think my only issue with 9 and 10 and with uh, Harvey Dent Two-Face in general, is Diedrich Bader. <laughs> yep, yep, you hit on it perfectly. I um, think he's completely miscast as Two-Face. Yeah. I do not think he is able to properly portray the duality of Two-Face and Harvey Dent. I don't think anything particularly interesting is done with the duality of, of Harvey Dent and Two-Face. True, yeah. There's some people that react to his face in disgust, and then there's some people that aren't bothered at all by it. Like, it's not even a factor that they consider. Yeah. Like, when he's talking to Zito's girlfriend. She's, like, not even phased. She's not by, even phased. Like, it's yeah. not a thing. It's like, we need to have... There always needs to be some reaction the first time someone sees Two-Face. And it's just like... I don't know. I feel like it really dropped the ball in terms of this character. I don't think, again... That's my big problem is that I don't think Dietrich Bader was right for this character at all. I think of the other two face voice actors we got over the years that just kind of like nailed it so much. Like, and this really, that that's the whole time, like the whole thing. It's like your whole premise and your whole ending of this season is Harvey Dent centric. And I feel like that's probably the poorest performance that you're getting is from Dietrich Bader, yeah. who is a good voice actor and is good in a lot of things. He's just not. It's cut out for Harvey Dent Two Face. Yeah, I think here it actually it almost. I don't know if it's true. It almost sounds like too much like himself. He just yeah, sounds there's like no Dietrich different, Bader. Yeah, there's no yeah. differentiation too. There's no. Sometimes he gets a little more sinister Gravely, with the, with yeah. the Two Face, but it doesn't really go far enough. And there's not. It's not playing off of like the duality of it of himself too much. Yeah. There's not even a lot with the coin. There's not a lot with that There's at all. There's not a whole lot with that at all. No, yeah. like it's it's just it really it just it seems like a very half-assed two-faced depiction. It's just like it feels like this could have very much been set up better. And the whole thing about Harvey is like he was, you know, again, if you go with the the, the kind of the classic depiction, you know, Gotham's white knight, the good guy on the side of right. This is like a scummy Harvey Dent. 
Yeah. Like, I don't really care. You kind of get the difference. You kind of got what was coming to you. Yeah. Like, even Batman says at one point, like, he kind of used to put his thumb on the scale, like, a lot of the times. We still believed in justice or whatever. But I'm like, he's kind of scummy. Right. Like, right. so I'm like, good. Like, hey, you got what was you coming to you. You got what you had coming yeah, to you, Yeah, exactly. Pal. And I'm like, I don't know. I just... That was the weakest part, which makes this episode and the finale like very disappointing to me because it's a lot of Diedrich Bader right. not not bringing the character of Two Face home for me. Like I like that you know you get some violent stuff. You know he shoots that mugger in the leg. Like he caps some people in like uh, yeah. in this episode and stuff like that. But like overall, I just think it's like. Yeah, that performance, that voice performance is kind of what brings these last two down. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I do like that they find, they gave Barbara something else to do besides going around shooting people as well, where right. she's, like, acting as this attorney. Mm-hmm. I wish there was a little bit more conflict between them because, like, she seems very, like, all the way, like, oh, Harvey, you're innocent, blah, blah, blah. Like, they had, in the early episode, they had more of an adversarial relationship. Like, she saw him as, like, kind of scummy. Yeah. And it, I wish it was more, like, I'm going to defend you because it's the right thing to do and you need somebody that yeah. will like, you know, even though I don't, I don't sanction what you did, you're a prick, but like you, you still have a right to attorney and I'm going to like, you know, I'm assigned you're the public defender or whatever or something like that. Like, I wish it was more a little bit like, instead of she was like, Oh, poor Harvey. She was like, fuck you. You're a scumbag, but I'm going to do my job kind right. of thing. Like, I wish it was more like that and give a little bit more of a, Kind of, uh, you know, something else, another added layer to the episode that it's it's kind of missing. But So I wanted to ask you, what sure. was your take on the, the face transformation of Harvey? How they pulled off the two face? I don't, I don't think it's particularly that great. It kind of, it facially of, it kind of maintained, it didn't change his flesh tone. It's kind of, you know, his, his hair, hair kind of got, gray. his hair gets bleached or gray. And I guess he's supposed to have like some kind of pits in his face now. Yeah. I guess maybe it rotted his, or affected his gums and his yeah. teeth are kind of I've, wonky. I think it's because the art style is so simplistic. Mm. Like, and I mean, some of the, all, all the kind of Bruce Tim shows are that, but I just don't think it's visually as effective as what they were going for. Right. Like, I think the kind of, the, the Two-Face that you get in the animated series is like much more effective, even though it's like, you, you it's like a very stark contrast. You get that blue color. Right. The hair changes colors, like the lips, like the eyes kind of bulgy or more. Yeah, like yellow and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I don't, it didn't really do much for me in terms of like a Two-Face. Like, I wish, you know, especially with this show has the ability to go a little bit darker or whatever like make your skin look all melty and like put a little bit more like detail yeah. into it it's just like all right let's draw a couple holes he's got some fucked up teeth let's call it a day <laughs> it's kind of what i thought too i didn't you know i didn't hate it but i thought it was maybe one of those missed opportunities where you had a chance to maybe lean into something more horrific yeah make it running puss all the time or something. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah make his eye all milky or yeah. something you know what i mean like do something okay. like yeah it's just again it, it didn't do much for me just like the character of harvey dean i think okay. that's the Probably the character that gets gets it the the worst in this show is like Harvey Dent, and I think in this 1930 setting he should have definitely. I guess they were trying to be different and be like, well, Harvey's a little bit like ride the line, still kind of on the side of justice. But like, I really feel like in this depiction in the 30s and this like you know kind of earlier time period, like he should have been. That's the whole thing about Harvey. Who cares if like a like a some scummy prick lawyer falls? Like he's supposed to be Gotham's white knight. Right, but he's already like he's taking payoffs. He's doing all this stuff. Like he's scummy. Right, fuck him. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Like that, you lose that. It leads you down a path where you don't really care about Harvey. Exactly, because you're like you're a scummy piece of shit. You're not Gotham's white knight. You're not doing the right things. You're not on the side of justice. You're nowhere near. I got you. The Gordon and Batman level. You're not part of that trio anymore. You're just some scummy lawyer that wants to win at all costs. So you're willing to like ride the line, toe the line, put your thumb on a scale, or like. Like, take bribes and, like, be a little bitch and, like, oh, I got to win, so I'm going to take this money and then become Rupert Thorne's bitch. It's like, it doesn't, it, that's not the character of Harvey Dean as I associate with it. And if you're going to do that, then you need to make his turn differently and have a little bit of different implications for it. Right. Um, I don't know if it's in this, oh, I said in episode 10, I have a note about it. But, yeah, going on right to episode 10, this is just a continuation, basically, of 9. It's not really, it's not billed as a two-parter, but it basically you could call it a two-parter. It's just, it's the finale. Um, Dent is now kind of captured. Yeah, he's they incarcerated, send, yeah. They sent him to Arkham. Is Arkham too clean? 
It did look a little bit kind of homogenized, kind of clean. It's too clean to me. You don't see a whole. You don't see a whole lot of it, or am I remembering? Wrong? You don't see. You see yeah. it like a little bit when she goes to visit dude that's supposed to be King Tut one time, right? And then she goes and visits Harvey, and it's like you know, it looks like a sanitarium and stuff. Like, don't get me wrong with the white walls and all that stuff. Like, I get the aesthetic of it, but I'm like. Man, this is like pulpy 1930s. Let's make that place look really dark and dingy. And the whole yeah. thing, too, she wants, Barbara goes there to get Dent. She wants to get him transferred to get him some help. Why not have him in Blackgate wanting to get him to Arkham? Isn't Arkham the more for like to get help? Criminally and, insane. Type. Right, for these people. Right. And Blackgate is more of a prison. Yeah. It's like, Harvey, you shouldn't be in Blackgate. You need to be somewhere to get you some help. I'm trying to get you to Arkham Asylum. It's like, I don't want to go to Arkham, bitch. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Yeah. Like, I should pay for my crime. Yeah, that's something I didn't catch when I watched it, but that, that makes more sense. Yeah. I would just say, like, I, I think they just like, well, everybody knows Arkham. Let's put him in Arkham. We've already right. we've already drawn it. Yeah. We've we drawn it for the King Cut episode. <laughs> right. Let's let's reuse it. Let's that. use those sales again. Yeah, it just looks, it just looks like too too kind of clean uh to me now one little uh part here because you know bruce he's kind of feeling guilty and alfred's kind of like helping him feel a little guilty about you know he took harvey out to dinner and kind of started his ball and, rolling and it started all this happening yeah. um but i love i do love the little moment where he's like talking to harvey and he's like trying to convince him and he kind of he harvey saying something and like he, Bruce kind of slips into Batman mode. He's like, don't start growing a conscious now, Dan. Bruce lets his own dual personality just, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought that was a little it clever. It was a nice touch. I thought yeah. that was a little clever moment and a play on, like, the duality of Bruce Wayne and Batman and in a moment yeah. with Harvey Dent and, and, uh, and Two-Face. I thought that was a good little little like nugget in there to like have that kind of slip out and like play off of that. I thought that was, I'll give credit there. I thought that was a neat little, little trick. So what else is going on in the episode? Flash and Bullock, Barbara, what's, what's so, happening uh, here? Flash and Bullock, basically they go and uh, kidnap Harvey and yep. their plan is to just, you know, take him down there, turn him over to some of uh, Thorne's goons and they're going to kill him. Yep. And uh, Harvey kind of, you know, causes them to have a wreck. He gets free. Uh, did Barbara just drive up on him? I forget how she got there. Did she, Bar she's following them from. She's following they, them. They, that's right. They take him from she's like tailing them. Yeah, yeah. she's she's tailing them to like you know where they've taken him. Yeah. So she kind of winds up at a phone booth. She's kind of I think she's calling her dad. She's calling Batman too. She got Batman. <laughs> she digits. got Batman's phone number. Yeah. Yeah, KL five or whatever. Yeah. Like. Br one two six. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, and uh, they've kind of she's trying to winds up you know shackling herself to Harvey, handcuffing herself to Harvey. You know, he's like, "You crazy? What are you doing?" Right. And they wind up down, you know, at the Gotham Pier, which I thought was, you know, one of those things I had asked for something more moody, atmospheric, you know, you get you get guns, you get goons, you're down on the pier, you got the, all the fog rolling in. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah. The only uh, other than the, what I've mentioned before about the character of Harvey Dean, I wish that um I wish that they would have done that she didn't shackle herself to Harvey, mm -hmm. that when she was like when he he would have took that opportunity to like escape, like punched her, or knocked her out some way after yeah. she saved him from Flash and Bullock, and he would have went to the docks to look for Thorn or to look for his men and take them out, and Barbara would have like shown up, and the ultimate like finale or the crux of the episode would have been like he could have, Har it would have been Harvey's choice to like flee and get away or to save Barbara and the Harvey side chooses to save Barbara. I got you. I yeah. felt like that would have been better than them just like having this like oh we're shackled together right. for most of the episode and like it just feels it felt a little weird to like it felt okay. like a weird choice where you could have like had her been knocked out. She goes there to try to still help Harvey to try to help him out with the situation or whatever, try to get him out of this. And then she's about to get killed. And the, the two face side looks and like, I could run away. I can make it. Batman's here taking out Thorns goons. If I leave right now, you know, I'm, I'm good. home free. Yeah. The Harvey side looks back. There's Barbara. I need to save Barbara. I take the and I take a shot in the back, which he does anyway. He does save Barbara. Yeah. But I just thought it would be a more thematically if you give it a little bit more and you can literally like set up your, your shot to where like the two face side is all you see when he's looking at like getting away yeah. versus the Harvey side. Look at you directing this thing. Listen, <laughs> it just takes a little bit of common sense. No, folks. I got you. I got now, you. I just thought it would have been thematically a little bit better and letting a little bit more weight to it than just like, oh, we're shackled together and all. Oh, let me take this bullet for you in the back. Right. It, yeah, I felt a little weaker, but what 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 do I know? What do I know, Todd? <laughs> uh, one aspect of this uh, this whole like series, especially to come out, I think it come out in episode nine. There's a part where Batman is like 
he's like I always just giving Pennyworth down the road. He's like, you're wasting my time, Pennyworth. Right. And like now we finally get an episode ten. We get he starts calling him Alfred. Yeah. They've he's like Penny Alfred. Yeah. They've they've getting a Thank you, a little Alfred. bit more mutual yeah. respect for right. each other. And uh, at the end of the episode, we we see Batman after Dent Harvey Dent has died. He took uh, <laughs> he took uh, the bullet meant for Barbara. He Harvey Dent is dead. Gotham's. Uh, Gray Knight has, <laughs> has fallen. Morally, Gray Knight right. has fallen. No one gives a shit. Uh, has fallen, and Brad, uh, Batman decides to make his presence known to Rupert Thorne in a very, like, on the nose, but still cool reference to, like, the animated series. Right. Standing in the lightning in the storm. Like, cool shot. Good good way to end it. Throws that battering in there, kind of clips his lip and bloodies it. Right. Pretty cool. And Pretty cool. good way to end it, if yeah. only it had ended there. <laughs> right. Why? Wow. I knew it was coming. Right. I knew it was coming. I knew we couldn't get it through ten episodes without teasing Batman's greatest arch villain, Todd. The we, Joker. We get uh, we get a tease of the Joker, of course, down in some little shack somewhere. Uh, there's a lot of uh, very smiley, uh, very smiley murdered people around, and a uh, a little uh, like a quick glimpse of a very deep voice Joker, very much opposite of how he's normally depicted with his kind of high manic like right. energy like a very yeah. deep voice joker what did you think of the final the tease of the jacker coming soon uh, i mean it was okay <laughs> it was okay i right. mean you know, i didn't despise it i didn't hate it you know it seems like he's definitely you know there's a precedent for the joker back in that time period that they're shooting for him to still be he kind of came up as like you know kind of a killer Kind right, of, I'm a maniacal type killer. Maybe not so much what we know him as nowadays, but more, well, more of a killer, less of a trickster. Right, more of a killer, less of a trickster less back in I'll those shoot, days. Let me shoot some people yeah. more than I'm going to poison Gotham's water yeah. supply, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, so let's see how they play that out in season two when it arrives. True. I mean, like, I got get you had to have a tease or something, but I'm like, yeah. who didn't expect a Joker tease? Like, you, it's like I don't know. I guess I should understand that it's just like. You gotta check that box at some yeah. point if you're making a Batman show. But I'm like, I don't know. Give me something else. I don't know who it could have been. But like, you know, and we'll see. Maybe if it is a darker, because like I do feel like these last five definitely got a little bit more violent and darker than the first five. Like they I don't, did. I don't know if that was intentional, if it just that's the way the stories were driving them. But like, hopefully, we see a very a very dark take on the Joker. Like I'm, I'm not saying I hate it, but I'm just like I was so expected, and I'm like, ah, of course, <laughs> right, right? Of course, Mister J's around, and we've already got Harley, but she's a Harley less, like a Jokerless Harley in this. Yeah, universe. she's kind of her own, on her own, doing her Which own. Which is thing. fine. That's a good. That's a new take, and that's a good. You know, I like the take on Harley, the yeah. more cold, and she she definitely fits a colder Joker if they were to team up at some point. But uh, yeah, I, more solid back half than the first half. I will say my general notes on this. One of the big, the, some of the problems. I have is like sometimes the dialogue in this show feels so stilted okay. <laughs> and some of the things feel so rushed like I wish if you had 10 episodes some of these should have been stretched out a little bit more yeah. the fall of Harvey Dent and the duality and like Harvey's like how he's suffering with the, the, the two phase transformation. You could have drugged that out more. It's like everything is so rushed because you got 10 episodes and like you're trying to you're doing villain of the week episodes and you're not doing a lot of long form storytelling. Right. So like you do all this and a lot of it's just so cramped and rushed and like we're in Rupert Thorne's mansion. He's crashed in. He's in prison. Now he's on the docks and he's dead. And it's like all in like 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's a lot thrown at you. It's and a lot to unpack. And I still don't think there'll be any episode of this that I'll ever sit down and be like, I want to rewatch that episode. There's you. none of these that I'll sit yeah. down years from now and fondly remember and be like, oh, that was a, a great amalgamation of a Batman episode. Right. Like, it's just there's nothing overly memorable, even though this was still a better second half than first half, I would say. Okay. Uh, ready to get to reviews? Uh, I thought I might throw some uh, things we hadn't done on the first one, uh, some Easter eggy type well, stuff. That's too damn bad. <laughs> okay, we no, won't I'm do just it. Kidding. Go ahead. So uh, 1 through 10 is uh, ripe with Easter egg material. Uh, a couple of things I picked up on major character-wise, if they do so decide to develop them this way. Uh, the photographer we see throughout the first five episodes, I don't think he shows up in these final five. Uh, he gives his name as Eel O'Brien. Mm -hmm. Eel O'Brien goes on in the comics to become Plastic Man, so mm -hmm. we'll see. All right. 
uh, Jim or James Corgan, the cop that winds up turning on Barber, kind of accepted the hit he was going to shoot her. Later on in the comics, he becomes the specter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recall seeing there were several uh, newspaper images, or you know, I think there were some images of Batman on like that board Montoya had when she set up her task force. Mm-hmm. They were just kind of ripped right from the old comics, old DC designs. Right. There's even one headline where he's referred to as the Bat Hyphen Man, mm-hmm. which he was back in the late 30s. Right. Uh, there was actually a shot where I think it was Commissioner Gordon was given an uh, uh, address to the press. Uh, there was one lady there that is actually spot on animated just like the Max Fleischer, Lois Lane. I did not catch that I've heard at all. some people say there was also a Jimmy Olsen in that scene. I saw Lois. I didn't see Jimmy. Maybe I go back and look for him. Maybe I won't. <laughs> right. Uh, in the Carnival episode, uh, we get a reference, or actually we see uh, Batman's original Golden Age girlfriend, Julie Madison. Right. At first, I thought, you told me that earlier, I thought that was like maybe like a, a Julie Newmar thing or something. Right. But no. And you could have played it that way, but I think it was Julie Madison. Julie Madison. Gotcha. A lot of 66 Batman references. Uh, there was the one guy who was obviously King Tud in the Harley Quinn episode. Right. A lot of people pointed out there was a map in the Bat Cave that if you look at the map in the 66 TV series, it's just it's exactly like it or, or pretty close to it. Right. And then there's a few other things, but it was it was not without its Easter eggs and references. <laughs> fair, fair. Now I have to find all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find oh, it and put it in the video now, Tom. I'm sorry. Thanks. Strike my last five yeah. minutes from the record. This is why people <laughs> hate us. <laughs> uh, no, you're all good. All right, let's go on to reviews now, Todd. Uh, give us your review score for, uh, we'll go episode by episode, then I'll get your oh, okay. your season one score overall. Give us your review score for Batman Cape Crusader episode six. Uh, episode six, you know, I'm probably going to, maybe I'm shooting the moon a little too high here. I thought it was great. I give my one and only eight to this entire series. I love <laughs> I don't know. There's, nah, there's yeah. something about listen. Everybody likes what they like. Batman I and Alfred are fighting a ghost in the graveyard. You, you got yeah. Me. I forgot about Alfred <laughs> yeah. getting possessed too. Yeah. That was funny. He should have been like. Uh, he should have been like with full exorcist. Like you might have touched God's in hell. All right. What about episode seven? Uh, actually, uh, seven through ten, I, I stayed with the seven. I stayed good. I thought these were good. You know, we don't have a rating for solid, so I'm gonna equate solid with you know six. <laughs> Seven with good, which right. is solid. They were good, solid episodes. Okay, they had their issues. You know, I, I don't didn't really care for Anamanapia in the shootout episode, yeah. that, that that the contract episode. Yeah, he just wasn't my cup of tea. I don't know a lot about him, so I don't really cast a lot of ding, hate. Ding ding ding, <laughs> a lot of hate towards his character. Right. And then you know your final uh, nine and ten with your Harvey Dent kind of downfall and storyline. I only thing that really held that back for me was a, unfortunately Diedrich Bader. I think if you get a different voice actor in that role and maybe you maybe instead of 10 episodes you maybe do 12 13 or maybe you, as much as i love that catwoman episode maybe you kind of cut back on that and, and do a bit more with harvey earlier to kind of make this not feel so rushed with his story at the end right or yeah fin penguin or something cut those out yeah i mean yeah. you know Going back to the beginning, it kind of it started out out of the gate a little bit. You know, it, the first episode didn't hit for me, and I, I'll be honest with you, uh, female penguin was part of it. Right. I think that was unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> and this, it just it just came across as unnecessary to right. me, and I mean she doesn't she hasn't showed back up in the other ones. I yeah. don't, so I don't know what the purpose was. Just villain of the week. Yeah. It's just to do some stuff, you know. You know, I thought Clayface episode was solid. Cat one episode was my. Probably my favorite from the first five. Right. Uh, you know, I thought what was, what was after that was the Harley one. Harley was five. I forget what four was. Oh, that was Firebug. Firebug, Firebug. was another solid yeah. one. Uh, the only problem I really had with the Harley one was, you know, some of that stuff that she was doing with her victim seemed a little, <laughs> right. little weird, right? A little too weird. Exactly. Uh, but my final thoughts and score for the entire series, I actually I'm going to bump up to a seven. I thought it wound up being good for me. It's not great. It's not amazing it's not excellent it just wound up being good i thought the, the final five kind of saved the first five for me right i enjoyed these final five watching them more than i did in the first five uh season two i'll watch it when it comes out i'm not sitting around watching the clock waiting for it yeah but you know it wound up being a good series like i say i i don't put it up there with batman the animated series or any of those other projects that kind of came after that but I still, it wound up just being good for me. A seven, which is good. Gotcha. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think, again, I think all that's fair. Uh, you know, we have some different episodes that we think are better than others. Um, I think for episode six, I give six, uh, I give six a mediocre. I give it a five. You're at an eight. I was at a five. Maybe I'm a little too high. I give seven <laughs> and eight. Uh, I give seven and eight a good. So okay. that's our um, uh, the kind of the uh, supernatural one. Seven was the uh, automatopoeia, the shootout. Again, the I like, the, I like the, the the street level elements of that. Mm -hmm. And then nine and ten, I give decents. Um, so stronger scores for sure for for this half overall for the entire season for season one. I'm gonna give it a six decent. Okay. So we're not too far off. You not give it close. a good. I think it's just like what you can pick out of it. That I, no, we can't all universally agree like this is amazing. So you have to. Everybody right. has their own like. Oh, I picked that out. I like. So you like Gentleman Ghost. I like this. I pick this out. I like, you know, and then yeah, yeah. we come to the kind of same middle ground. I say decent. You say good. I'm not saying this is a horrible show. I'm saying it is not people. Um, the people that think that say this is anywhere near the level of the animated series. That's when I have a problem. Right. It's nowhere near that same quality level. Like it feels lazy in a lot of parts, and that's my big problem is that there's a lot of stuff that feels lazy, but I don't think it's awful. I don't think it's bad. I think it's just a decent little little Batman show gotcha. that could get better in the future maybe, and hopefully it does. Again, I'm like you. I'm not going to wait around for season two, but when it hits, I'll be like, hey, Todd, it's time. <laughs> it is time. It's time to suit back up. Yeah, exactly. It's time, it's time to look at it. So, yeah, six decent for me. Like, you know, hopefully that makes you happy. <laughs> Stop with the hate. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, six decent, seven good from you. I think that's pretty fair for this show. It, it does. I don't think we're being overly harsh on it. I think there's stuff that you can pick out that's good here and there, but I don't think it's not, again, it doesn't rate that highly on all time Batman shows list. It fits in that bottom half, yeah. that latter half, somewhere with the Beware of the Batmans and that kind of things of the world. Yeah. So your mileage will vary, folks. Exactly. Your mileage will vary. Anything else, Don? I think I'm good. All right. I think we'll call it a wrap for this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Um, if you want to get in touch with us on social media, send us an email. All that's at the bottom of the screen. Tile Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. Thanks for watching, guys.